ABC 10 News starts now with breaking news. And that breaking news from the Sweetwater Union High School District. The school board has just placed its superintendent on paid administrative leave following the state audit released just two days ago. Good evening, I'm Steve Atkinson. And I'm Kimberly Hunt. Sweetwater has been an ongoing financial turmoil dating back to September of 2018. Our ABC 10 News reporter Laura Acevedo is joining us now live from home. And Laura, this move came just hours after hundreds of teachers were laid off. It did, and the decision was made during closed session, the board voting to place Dr. Karen Janney on paid administrative leave, voting, voting four to one to do so. Now, Dr. Janney has been the superintendent of the district since 2015, and according to Transparent California, her pay and benefits combined last year were nearly $294,000. After hours in a closed session meeting, the board announced Dr. Karen Janney was on paid administrative leave. Board member Frank Tarantino saying the action is not disciplinary, but instead to ensure an efficient investigation of the concerns raised in a state audit released Monday night. According to her biography on the district's website, Dr. Janney has 37 years of teaching and administrative experience. She's been a teacher, assistant principal, principal and assistant superintendent with the Sweetwater District. She became superintendent in 2015. We will continue to cooperate with the San Diego County office. After the announcement, board president Frank Tarantino, the only no vote, announced he was stepping down from his position. It's my feeling that the board deserves a leader that supports this action. On Monday, the state released their findings of an audit centering on Sweetwater's finances. The report indicating there was evidence of fraud and misappropriations of funds and that illegal fiscal practices may have occurred by current and former employees. The decision to place the superintendent on leave comes just hours after the board voted to lay off over 200 educators. During that decision, Dr. Janney calling the cuts a difficult decision. And the main reason remains the same, because of the significant decline in enrollment. The cuts include all district librarians and the closure of the district's learning centers. Because of their mismanagement, my members are losing their jobs. Julie Walker is the president of the Sweetwater Education Association, the union with nearly 2,000 members. This is not the fault of my members. This is the administration. After their decision, the board voted to have Dr. Moises Aguirre serve as acting superintendent for the time being. He is currently one of the district's assistant superintendents. Now, I did reach out to a district spokesperson after the decision for a comment, but so far I have not heard back. Reporting live, Laura Acevedo, ABC 10 News. Laura, thank you. And we've been following Sweetwater's budget struggles for years. Here's a breakdown of the timeline. In September of 2018, the district announced it was facing a $30 million budget deficit. Things got worse in December of that year when an independent audit found it would actually be $68 million in the hole before the end of the school year. And that's when the district started exploring options, which included granting early retirement to more than 300 teachers. Then in a controversial move, the district cut four bus routes last July, and that forced several students to find their own rides or walk miles to school. That led to walkouts and parent protests. The district is also being investigated by the Securities and Exchange Commission. If you want more details on the superintendent and the timeline of the Sweetwater School District's troubles, just download the ABC 10 News mobile app. There's a free version available in the App Store. Well, tonight, people gathered at a makeshift memorial at the crash site where a teenager died and seven others were injured in Carlsbad. Early this morning, an SUV carrying eight teenagers rolled over. 16-year-old Jack Mundy did not survive. Very unfortunate and heartbreaking, and I pray for their family. You know, and uh, the community's lost a good one. And the other seven teenagers were taken to the hospital with injuries ranging from minor to severe. Police do not believe that alcohol was a factor, but they are looking into whether speed is a possible cause. I'm just worried about 
the pandemic blossoming beyond our control and us not being able to recontain it. San Diego County reporting the highest single day of positive coronavirus cases. It's right in line with a surge of cases in the state. ABC 10 News reporter Anthony Pura spoke with an epidemiologist about what's contributing to the rise in numbers. I do think it's our behavior. It is not the reopening. We could reopen anything and go about our business safely if we did it responsibly. Andrea LaCroix is the chief of epidemiology at UCSD. She's watching as cases of coronavirus go up. California has hit a new record, more than 7,000 new COVID-19 cases in a 24-hour period, a 69% rise in just days. In San Diego County, Today we are reporting uh, our single highest day of positive tests. There are 332 COVID-19 cases reported and six new deaths. San Diego County is surrounded by counties on a state COVID-19 watch list. Los Angeles, Imperial and Riverside counties all seeing spikes. Tijuana is also being hit hard by the virus. LaCroix says San Diego is a destination location and she wants people to visit safely, but some of the cases could likely be traced to visitors. It's an example of how social mobility spreads the virus. Neighboring state Arizona is also seeing a rise in cases. This graph from our sister station in Phoenix shows the increase they are seeing. What's happening there is they never had as, uh, they never had as restrictive uh, uh, stay at home orders as we had. They had some and now they're loosening and they're also having an increase in cases because of that. But despite differences in state policies, LaCroix says it still comes down to behavior and how diligent people are about wearing masks and social distancing now that people are out and forced to live alongside the virus. What we do need to do is when we come out with these reopenings, we, we just have to take care of each other and try to do it in a socially responsible way. Anthony Pura, ABC 10 News. The Port of San Diego is extending rent deferrals for its tenants through August. This is according to the Union Tribune. This comes even as Bayfront businesses begin reopening. The UT reports the date when tenants have to start repaying the deferred rent also got pushed back until October of 2021. Tenants will then have 10 months to fully repay what they owe. It also says that some tenants ultimately think that rent abatement or lease restructuring will be needed. Tenants include those in Seaport Village and other parts of San Diego properties. The Democrats are revealing their convention plans tonight. Party officials revealed much of the convention will be done online. They are asking the delegates not to travel to Milwaukee for the August event. Nominee Joe Biden will be there in person to make his acceptance speech. The party chairman says limiting the number of people gathering for the event is the responsible thing to do during this pandemic. An appeals court ordered the case against President Trump's former national security advisor to be thrown out. Michael Flynn pleaded guilty twice to lying to the FBI about his conversations with the Russian ambassador during the transition. Last month, the Justice Department filed to drop the case, but the judge wanted more time to consider the request. In a split decision today, the appeals court said the judge was wrong to question the Justice Department. President Trump spoke about the decision. I'm very happy about General Flynn. He was treated horribly. He was treated very, very horribly by a group of very bad people. And I think you'll see things are going to start to come out. There are more appeals. The case could still drag on for months. New at 11, Tucson's police chief is offering to step down over an in-custody death two months ago. Officers were called because a man was on drugs and running naked around his house. He was eventually handcuffed face down. 12 minutes later, he became unresponsive and died. Chief Chris Magnus says the officers violated department policy. He also says his department should have revealed the death sooner. To demonstrate my willingness to take accountability for these mistakes, I am offering my resignation to the mayor, city council, and city manager, which they can accept or handle as they deem appropriate. All three officers involved, they have since resigned. Tucson's mayor has not decided whether to accept the chief's resignation. The San Diego Police Department announced new policies requiring officers to de-escalate and intervene. Specifically, officers are told to use techniques that can resolve situations with little or no force 
and to step in if another officer is using unreasonable force. They're also required to report such incidents to a supervisor. Mayor Kevin Faulkner believes these changes will increase police transparency and accountability. These policies are meant to protect the officer as much as the subject and prevent escalation whenever possible before force is used. San Diego PD Chief David Nislight said these changes are a step in the right direction, but the department will continue to look at best practices across the nation and how they can continue to best serve the city. A man convicted of murdering a San Diego police officer more than 40 years ago has been granted parole for the fifth time. Today, the parole board ruled that Jesus Cecina is no longer a risk to society. Cecina was convicted of shooting and killing Archie Bugs while Bugs was on duty back in 1978. The four previous times Cecina was granted parole, the governor reversed that decision. It's unclear if that will happen this time around.